Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to talk about annotations. And we're going to split this up into two parts. Part one is going to be all about highlighting and markups. And part two is going to be into making notes, using notes, uh, bringing or importing images, and the annotations uh, drop down, which gives you the ability to use stamps and labels. It's too much all for one video, so that's why we're going to break it down into two. So let's get to part one, uh, highlighting and uh, using markups. All right, we're back into one of our plans we used earlier. Um, and you'll see this is a foundation plan. Um, and we've got a few highlights already going in this, a few dimensions. Uh, and we're pretty much going to hide those with one simple click. And if you follow the mouse over to the left side and you see where the the uh, page name is or plan sheet name is, there's a couple of icons. To the right of that icon, it looks like a um, letter H. Uh, it's actually the icon that uh, shows or hides dimensions and notes. If we click on that, everything disappears. Now it's just hidden, it's not deleted, but in times when you don't want to show those or, or any of those, it's a good way to simply click them off and then of course you can click them back on. Now, Just because I've hidden them doesn't mean I can't make new ones. You absolutely can and we're going to do that now. We broke this up into two parts because the annotations group uh, at the top right of your screen and if you've got your plans with set up uh, in default, that's, that's where it should be. You can change those. You can move those around just like a lot of things in Plan Swift. But right now, we'll assume that you're seeing the annotations group, and it's got from left to right, markup color, markups, highlight, note, image, overlay, and annotations. Uh, in today's session, we're going to go over uh, using highlighter, markups, and then the markup color is really a um, property of the other two. In other words, you can change your markups or your highlights based on the color that's showing on the screen right now. Right now the uh, markup color is yellow. So if we're going through and we're identifying new work, for example, something I do uh, on screen, and I'm looking for things that I'm going to do, and obviously I'm going to highlight them. I'm a demolition contractor, so I'm looking at things that uh, I may be taking out or information I may need to know. So first thing I'm going to do is go and highlight my items for takeoff. So my color is yellow. Uh, if I go on the down arrow, I can change the color to anything in these colors here, and you can add more colors if you want to. So if I want to highlight something, I have to go over and hit the highlighter. It's just a click. There's not a down arrow. I click on that, and you'll see that next to the crosshairs, you've got a little icon that says box. There are two types of highlighting you can do, box and point to point. And I'll show you in a minute how to change from point to point. Most times I just use the box because it's just so convenient. So I'm going to highlight. I see here I'm going to zoom in. New exit door opening. Well, that's something that I would do. So I simply start at the upper left hand corner. I click my left mouse button and just hold it down and make and drag a box and done. Now, when I've done that, it's still in the highlighting mode. So I can keep on highlighting. I'm going to be highlighting in that same color, but I can keep on highlighting that whole sheet until I do one of two things. Either press escape, which stops the highlighting, or up here where the digitized record is red, I click on that and it stops. Escape or clicking on the digitized record to stop it does the same exact thing. As I'm going across here, I see an item of information that uh, is not actually work, but I am going to be taking out, out some wall. Uh, there are openings between uh, these columns here um, that's on another plan sheet. So I'll highlight that, but I want to do a different color. So I'll, I'll, take, I'll click on the, the uh, down arrow under markup color, 
and change it to like a green. Uh, green information is for me. So I hit highlight and I just highlight that and I hit escape and now I've highlighted a few things and you can go on and on. All right. Now let's say I want to, uh, what can I do with the highlights once I've done them? If I right click on a highlight, I see that there are choices I can make. The properties just brings up the property box. Lock is kind of interesting. Lock keeps you from um, being able to move the highlight until you unlock it. Now on the flip side of that, you can still delete it even if it's locked. Uh, I'm not quite sure it was meant to have that function, but it does. So if I lock it, now when I put my mouse on it, I don't see those little boxes that get at the corners, which, which, which actually would allow me to change the size or move it. I can't do anything with it until I right click it and unlock it. For the most part, I like to be able to move these things around, resize them. I'm not locking a highlight. I mean, what would be the point? Other things you can do on that is, um, besides copy and paste, which so let's say you've got that size, that note in several places, you could copy that and then just paste, 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 which isn't much quicker than highlighting, but there again, you can copy and paste as long as you want. You can also use this dialog box here or this drop down box to delete. Order. Now, order is kind of important. If you're, uh, if you've done a takeoff and this note, uh, this, or this highlight is in that takeoff, it may be below or above that layer. Remember, PlanSwift uses layers kind of like AutoCAD uses layers. So, you may not be able to see that highlight properly. Changing the order, bringing it to the front, or sending it to the back, will give the effect of being able to see it when you're no longer on it. If it's hidden behind, below something, bringing it to the front will bring it up so you can see it again. It's just that simple. All right, we've probably done enough on the highlights so you understand it's just a simple way to highlight just as you would with a marker. But let's say you want to use something more like a marker. Well, start your highlight and then go down to the very bottom of the screen. Right now it says it's in box mode. And you'll see at the very bottom of the screen to the right of verify points on the very very bottom, uh, the, the frame of the screen, it says record mode box. Simply click on that and it changes to point, changes the record mode from box to point to point. Now you've got what looks like a highlighter pin and it says highlighter and it draws lines basically. So I can draw lines. You uh, start it with one click and you end it with one click. Escape stops it, just like the other one does. You can move them around, just like the boxes. You can delete them, just like the boxes. It will stay in that mode next time you highlight it until you change it back to box mode. Now, I can tell you that the default is box mode, and I hardly ever use the point to point, but if you like drawing lines versus rather than dragging and, and making boxes, go for it. It'll stay that way um, until you get out of plan swift. And I think it goes back into box mode, but uh, don't hold me to that. All right, enough about highlight. Markups. What do markups do? Because markups will also use the markup color that you used with highlighter. They kind of share that, that, that uh, feature. So markups has three features, arrow, box, and pen. And they're, they're really simple to use, and you'll find that they're uh, uh, actually pretty cool to use, especially when we get to the notes feature, where you can uh, uh, take a note and then use these markups to show where this note belongs. So uh, let's go first with the uh, markup, the arrow markup. If you click. The first point should be the beginning of the arrow, not the end. So I'm saying that this is the beginning of the arrow. I click there. And when I want to stop it, 
click here, escape, or, or hit the stop button. You just made an arrow. You don't like that color? Just click on it so it's highlighted. And when I say highlighted, you see the little boxes, the little squares at each end, the little points. And I go up here, mark up color, and I change it to a different color. Arrows changed. Just like the highlights, I can copy. I can paste. I can also, because this has points, kind of like a linear or segment, I can move those points around and I can change the direction of where the arrow is going. And it will snap to things too, just like other type items in Plants With. Box markup is, is, is very similar. It's just making a box, asks you to make two points, beginning point, and then as you stretch it out, make horizontals, verticals, whatever, and you click again and you made a box. And it will stay in that mode of keeping making boxes, just like highlighting does, until you press escape or stop. And just like the arrows, you can change the color by clicking on it and then going up and picking a different color. Pin markup is basically for making lines, almost like an arrow without the pointer. If I start, it's going to make continuous lines until I hit escape or stop. And just like the other two, I can change the color by just clicking on it so it's highlighted and going and changing to whatever color I want. That's markups. They're not hard to use uh, and they're easy to move around once you've created them. They're easy to copy. They're easy to delete. So that basically covers us for highlighting markups. The only difference about markups and highlighting and dimensions is your little uh, hide icon over on the to the right of the file name or sheet name does not hide markups. See I clicked it off and my, my dimensions and my highlights have disappeared. The markups do not. So just remember, if you put markups on there, they will show when your drawings. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future. For right now, join us back on part two, where we'll go into making notes, uh, bringing in images or importing images, and uh, using the annotations uh, feature, which is about revision clouds, rubber stamps, and sticky tabs. <laughs> there again, there's a lot to show you in this. We left out overlay on purpose because we're going to make a whole uh, we're going to make an individual uh, tutorial on overlays. Overlays are used for comparing drawings and comparing like drawings or unlike drawings to each other and showing you those differences. It's kind of an advanced feature and it's in the annotations but we're going to make a uh, look for a, a separate tutorial on overlays. See you next time.